So recently I received a question about how to do this sky flip transition in DaVinci Resolve. Um, I'm not actually sure what it's called, but so if anyone knows what this transition is called, maybe they can enlighten me and I'll be very grateful. But basically once you've set it up in DaVinci Resolve, you can keyframe it. So you can do any kind of rotations you want or any zoom in and zoom out and the two clips will still be joined together at the skyline and they'll kind of like blend together. Uh, no matter how you keyframe it basically. So yeah, let's have a look at how to do it. So right now we're in DaVinci Resolve in the edit page. So let's say right here is our timeline obviously and we'll have like all the clips, other clips that we'll be editing. So let's say we want to make this clip into a sky flip transition. So let's say we want to combine it with another footage. Let's say this one. So obviously these two footage will be, uh, this one will be flipped around and joined uh, at the horizon, horizontal line, at the skyline. And so what we're going to do is first we're going to delete this clip. Okay, and then we're just going to select this clip and then click on the Fusion tab. So right now we're in the Fusion tab and as you can see, there's, this is our original clip coming in and then this is the output. So right now it's just coming in, going out, nothing's happening, right? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to bring in the second clip. So click on the media pool and go and find your second clip and just drag it in. So here we have the second clip and we can close the media pool now. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to merge these two clips together. So I'm just going to delete this line right here and I'm going to press shift and space bar, shift and space bar. You should see this uh, menu right here and search for the merge node and just uh, select it, press enter. And now we have the merge node. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the second clip as the foreground. So I'm going to right click and then just drag it into the merge node and use it as a foreground. And I'm going to use the original clip, uh, right click, drag it in and use it as the background. And then we're just going to drag the merge node into the output. So right now what you're seeing is the second clip is basically the foreground. So it's basically on top of the uh, our original clip. Our original clip is being uh, kind of pointed into the merge node, connected into the merge node as a background. So it's basically just underneath this clip. And then both of them, are then once they're merged, they're just connected to the output. So this is the final output that you'll be seeing. The first thing we might want to do is to just to flip this second clip upside down. So with that, I'm going to select it and then press shift space bar and then search for the transform node. There it is. Click on it and press enter. And it should be connected automatically if you selected the second clip. If not, then you can just delete the connections by double clicking and then just, you know, connect the second clip into the transform node and then the transform node into the merge node. So right now that the second clip is running into this transform node where you can transform it basically. You can increase the size, rotate it or do whatever you want. So what I'm going to do is just going to rotate it 180 degrees. So you just click on the transform node and in the inspector tab, you can have the uh, angle right here. You can just type in 180 degrees and now it's flipped upside down and I might want to move it on the Y axis slightly. So I just go to go to the Y axis and move it upwards into the right position. So that's it's a good start. So what we want to do now is basically just uh, draw like a little mask around here. So the sky will cut off and merge with the, the bottom clip. So to do that, uh, I'll use the red rectangle node. Uh, so I'm going to go, just going to click shift space bar again and let's search for the rectangle, press enter. And with the rectangle node, I'm going to right click and connect it into the second clip and use it as an effect mask. So I'm going to select it. So right now you can see that wherever the rectangle is, is where you can see the second clip. So obviously we might want it to be a bit larger. So I'm just going to click on the rectangle and just, you know, you can just click and drag, click uh, left mouse and drag right here. And right now the, the cutoff point is kind of a bit too harsh. It's like really sharp. So I might want the soft edge to increase a little bit. So it's like slowly fading in. And let's have a quick look. There, it's much, now the, the, the joint is much more like kind of smooth. We might want to increase the smoothness even more. So I might click on the rectangle and then increase the solve edge just a bit more. And let's have another quick look. There, it's starting to get a bit better. Obviously you can fine tune this and like make, you know, increase the solve edge if you want or move the mass around, you know, depending where you want the sky to be cut off. Uh, but for demonstration purposes, this should give you like uh, a, a rough enough idea of how to like fine tune it. So I might tune it a bit, fine tune it a bit quickly. Uh, I go to the transform node, maybe move the top clip down just a little bit more. 
and you know select the rectangle maybe cut it off at around here because later on when we rotate it we don't want like too much of the sky well actually it's all up to your taste and how you want it to look basically so there's no right and wrong but uh, one last thing I might want to do is uh, I might want to increase the rectangle upwards a bit because uh, later on when the, the thing is spinning we don't want the rectangle to be cutting off the bottom of the second clip so when it rotates back around to the bottom we don't want it to be cutting off you know like the, the land mass or the parking lot or whatever so uh, to navigate this um, this monitor here you can use uh, command if you hold control down on your keyboard or command if you're using Mac and then just use your mouse scroll wheel you can zoom in and out or you can just hold the middle mouse down or the the scroll wheel down and you can just drag it around you know so if you want to navigate the uh, the viewport so I'm just gonna increase the, the height here and then again I'm just I'll just have to move this uh, move this tangle upwards a bit so it's basically just like drawing masks in Photoshop or After Effects or Premiere Pro if you ever use those programs. So it's nothing too complicated. And obviously you have to select the rectangle and you want to move the mask around. So let's have one last quick look. Okay, let's say that's uh, I'm happy with that for now. Right now the two clips are basically joined together and merged together at the, uh, at the sky, right? So now we can use another transform node to basically move or zoom in or rotate these two clips together. So let's say um, in down here in the node uh, node window, we can just click anywhere so we're not selecting anything. Uh, press shift spacebar again, and we're gonna put in another transform node. So again, use the transform node, press enter. And this time we're gonna press uh, put in the transform node after the merge node. So you can just uh, drag it here, hold shift. And when it's like between the lines, you just let it go. So right now, what's, what's basically happening is basically this is the original clip, the bottom clip is coming into the merge node. This is the second clip, so it's the clip on top with the mask, so it's cutting off the sky and the transform, so it's rotated upside down and it's also coming into the merge node right here. So basically the two clips are merged together now. And then when it comes out, it will hit another transform node. Now with this transform node, whatever I do to it, it will affect both clips. So let's say if I, oh sorry, I just <laughs> increase the size a bit too much there. So if I move it around, let's say if I move the center up or down, as you can see, both clips uh, will be affected equally. So basically all these nodes right here are used to join the two clips together and basically flip the second clip upside down. And after the merge node, they're basically the same, same clip now. So whatever transform parameter I put in, it will affect both clips equally so if I rotate it with the angle you can see both are just spinning around like this so with this now you can kind of get a picture of like how we're going to do our sky flip transition basically what we're going to do is we're just going to keyframe these values in this second transform node to like spin around or move around or zoom in uh, as the player head is playing along first I'm just going to reset everything so I'm just gonna, just going to click on this button here to reset all the value back to its original default values and I'm just going to click on the transform node and the first thing I might change is the pivot uh, pivot point basically so where it will rotate around so I might just uh, increase the y value a bit so it's rotating like in the center of where the sky is so now if I rotate the angle you can see it's rotating around that point right so I'm just going to put it back to zero and now to put in some keyframes, we're just going to drag the playhead back to the first frame. And let's put in a keyframe for the angle. So I'm just going to click on this square icon here. It's going to turn red. So we put in a keyframe. So at the beginning, at the frame one, we want the angle to be zero. And we can drag the playhead to whichever frame we want. Let's say the 140th frame. And we're just going to change the angle to 180 degrees. Again, now you can see the uh, keyframe buttons turn red. So we put in another keyframe. So we have a quick play, you can see that the angle changed from 0 to 180th degree at the 140th frame just like we've keyframed it. So now you can see like our video is now already spinning around. But the problem obviously is that when it's spinning around, obviously the video is not filling up the entire composition. So to, the easiest way to correct that is probably just to increase the size of the footage a bit. So for the size, we might increase it to let's say 1.7. And let's have a quick play. I think that should be enough to cover the entire frame. There you go. So that's pretty much, uh, we don't have the uh, 
like the edges cutting off anymore because now our video is large enough. But obviously right now the, the spinning motion is kind of looking a bit uh, kind of not very elegant and not very smooth. It's just like a constant speed from start to finish. So let's uh, correct that quickly. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into the spline editor. Just click on the spline icon right here and just going to make it a bit larger here. So we can choose all the keyframes that we put in in this uh, in our node editor. So obviously in this case we only have the transform node that we've got like keyframes. And we can see that right now the keyframes that we've put in for the angle is starting from like zero and going all the way to 180 degrees kind of in a straight line. So it's like kind of pretty constant and that's obviously not what we want. Now if we can't see the entire kind of uh, our entire node graph, we might want to click on this button, uh, zoom to fit. So it's going to fit both keyframes to like the, the monitor basically. So we can see it's going from zero all the way to 180 degrees. So if we click on any of these points, uh, well, that we have two keyframes, so we have only two points, but you can see that we have like this arm that we can uh, drag around. Sorry, my mouse skill is not very good. So we have this arm where we can drag around to change the shape of the uh, the keyframe. So right now we might want it to start kind of slowly and then speed up, speed up as it goes along. And also we might want it to kind of, you know, be fastest in the middle. And then as it's speeding along, speeding along, and then slowly, slowly, slowly spinning to a halt. So now if we have another play. Uh, we should see that, see the motion is slow, fast, and then slow again as it's coming to a stop. So it's much smoother than before. Now just close the spine editor. Let's have another quick play. So now you can see the motion is much nicer to look at. See, so it's like starts off slowly and then speeds up and then slow down as it's coming to an end again. Now I can see like a slight edge here. So I might have to increase the composition just a little bit more, maybe 1.71. And that should, oh, sorry, 1.71, not 1.17. Yeah, let's have a quick play again. And that should be fine, I think. So obviously right now we can put in any keyframes on any values that we want to create any kind of motion or transition that we want. For example, let's say you just want to see the, the C here at the beginning, right? So we don't want to see the, the top part right here. We can just move our playhead back to the beginning. And then we can set a keyframe for the center. Basically it's the position. And I'm just going to move it up slightly until we can't see the top clip anymore. Let's say just here. And then at the end, let's say when it's spinning around, spinning around until it reaches the end, I might not want to be able to see this kind of top city city part or this building part. Again, so I can just uh, come to the Y value or just click here on the, uh, the monitor and then just drag it up a little bit. And as you can see, we put in another keyframe. So right now if we play it, so at the beginning we can already see the C and it spins around. And then at the end we can already see the, the town right here. So again, we might have to adjust uh, another keyframe. So here, as you can see, there's like a gap where the, the our clip is not filling in the entire composition. So we might want to put in another keyframe here. So we just click on the center, or basically the position. And I'm just going to drag the clip down just a little bit. So now we have a quick play. We have basically three keyframes. So the, the clip is going to spin around and move this way and then move back and move up. So you can kind of see the the the, uh, the keyframe that we've drawn out for the position. So it starts here, it moves down here and moves back up there. And of course this is happening as well as the rotation. And again, if you don't find like the motion is like to your liking, it's not smooth enough or it's too linear, you can also go back to the spline editor again. And again, you just, you know, click to fit. So it fits both keyframes onto one monitor. So this is the keyframe for the rotation that we've already modified to become a nice smooth curve. And here you can see the, the keyframe for the position or basically the center that we've just entered in. And right now it's like a straight line. Again, you can modify it to however you want. You know, you can create any kind of curves or adjust the speed to however you want it. So once you're happy and finished, if you go back to the editing tab, you can see, and we have a quick play, all the kind of transition and the effects that we put in in the Fusion tab is now reflected back in our editing tab. So now basically it is clip that we worked on. Now we have our sky flip transition, I guess you would call it. 
and then you can continue editing so we can just put like all your other clips here here put in music put in whatever um yeah i guess that's pretty much it for the sky flip transition i hope for the person who uh, asked or requested the tutorial it gave you an idea of how to do it in davinci resolve i think you asked for it in davinci resolve right i'm not sure <laughs> Hopefully I didn't just do this in the wrong program and you asked for it in like Premiere Pro or After Effects. But uh, anyway, to any other person who might want to try this transition in uh, DaVinci Resolve, well, here you go. I guess it shouldn't be too hard, I guess. I mean, if I can do it, obviously anyone can do it. But um, just don't forget to download DaVinci Resolve, the latest version, 16 or at least 15, I think, uh, where you have the Fusion tab. I think the 14th, I'm not sure if you have Fusion tab or not, but I mean, it's free anyway, so you might as well just download the latest version, 15 or 16, and you should be able to do this. So yeah, that's all I have, I guess. I think the clip's gone on too long already, so I guess if I have a chance, I'll see you again. Bye.